Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, today we are going to take another interesting topic from the paper Evolutionary Biology on Human Origin and Evolution. I am Dr. Sudhir Verma, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Zoology, Deen Dayal Upadhyay College, University of Delhi. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about primate phylogeny. Why primate phylogeny? because the humans actually belong to the order primates. We will understand the various trends in human evolution that has taken place so far. Besides it, we will also learn about the timelines, locations of various fossils of humans that we have found, the molecular evidences in human evolution, etc. Let us start by understanding what do we mean by the term human evolution. It is the process by which human beings developed on earth from now extinct primates. We humans belong to the order primates if you see the classification and that is why we first need to understand about the primates so that we can understand our evolution from the primates which have now become extinct. Primates are basically a group of mammals which are comprising of lemurs, tarsiers, monkeys, chimpanzees, other apes and even the humans. There are almost 400 species of living primates which exist with varied sizes. And this large group of primates actually have some common characteristics which includes their large brain sizes, the grasping hand capabilities, stereoscopic vision and the so social organization. This large group has been classified into monophyletic lineages which are named as Streptocerines and Haplorines. The Streptocerines uh, have wet-nosed primates. They have small bodies nocturnal lemurs of Madagascar and lorises of Southeast Asia and Africa come under this group. Whereas haplorhines do have dry nosed and there are three lineages in this group which are the new world monkeys, old world monkeys and the apes. If you see this phylogenetic relationship here, the whole group has been divided into strepsirine and haplorines. In strepsirines there are lemurs which you can see here and in haplorines all these other group members are there. On this axis you can also see the geological time scale which represents their evolutionary history and here you can see are the humans as represented by their genus name Homo here and they do come under the group Haplorhini. Now, most of the time we get confused what to use, either hominids or hominins. Even literature, if you search, you find both the terms. Let's clarify what do we mean by these terms first. The great apes and humans are referred as hominids, a term previously used for extant humans and their closest extinct relatives. So the family hominidae in traditional classification represents these hominids. On the other hand, in the family hominini, there are humans and other closest extinct relatives of humans and they are called as hominins. So basically, the term hominin which you find in recent literature used by paleoanthropologists actually means the same as the term hominid means in the older literature. In our presentation, 
will use the term hominins as per the recent literature. In this image, you can see the overall human evolution. One of the misconceptions which is widely circulated is that we humans have evolved from apes. Actually not. The humans and apes do share a common ancestor, but we have not evolved from the apes as such. As represented here, you can see that great apes and humans had a common ancestor. But then it got diversed into two different branches. We are not going to deal with the Gorillinae branch which deals with gorilla and other apes. We are going to deal particularly with the Homininae branch which includes all these transitional forms which has led to the evolution of human beings starting from this common ancestor. In this image, you see the timeline of human evolution. What you see here is the time scale. In terms of geological time, you can understand. So here we are right now and this Homo sapiens represents the modern humans. Whereas if you go back in the history, it starts almost 4 million years ago. So human evolution, you can say, roughly started at around 4 million years ago and what you see here are mainly the Australopithecines group members and then this homo groups has been represented here. So in this image you see two of the colors. This orange color represents most of these are Australopithecines and this blue color members are basically members of the genus Homo. Here you can see the locations of various hominid fossils that people have collected. And if you see basically these locations are Ethiopia, Chad, Kenya, Tanzania and South Africa. So most of them are from the African continents. So one thing is very much clear that most of the fossils which we have got from human evolution they have been obtained from Africa. Now within these major sites you can see the particular local sites from where a particular specimen has been obtained or discovered. Again here you can see all the fossils which are being represented the, in the site from where they have been collected. And again on this side you can see the time scale that is in million years ago. There are two models of origin of Homo sapiens. These are two basic and classical models though there are other models as well but these two are the prominent ones. One of them is called as single origin hypothesis. It is also called as out of Africa model or Noah's Ark model or it's also termed as replacement model. This model proposes the origin of Homo sapiens in a single geographical origin that is Africa which was followed by dispersal in other continents. So according to this model there was origin of humans from Africa which further dispersed in other continents. In contrast the another model which is also called as multiple origin hypothesis or the Candelbra model or the continuity model. Now the name Candelbra is because of the shape which you find when you draw this kind of evolution. This model proposes parallel origin of Homo sapiens in different unconnected populations. So which model is correct? For that we need to understand the molecular evidences in human evolution. These molecular evidences have suggested us out of these two models it's the single origin hypothesis from Africa which is more suitably justified. Let us try to understand what do we mean by these molecular evidences in human evolution. There is something called mitochondrial Eve. The mitochondrial DNA from a large number of extant humans representing 
many populations helped to resolve the immediate ancestor of Homo sapiens. Two of the major findings that are consistent with single origin hypothesis are first, all the non African mitochondrial DNA sequences are variants of African sequence. And second major point was most of the variability in mitochondrial DNA sequences occurs in the African populations. So, Rebecca Kahn and co workers in the year 1987 proposed that a 2 lakh year old common mitochondrial DNA ancestor, which they named as Mitochondrial Eve, of modern humans on the basis of mitochondrial DNA nucleotide sequence analysis of geographically diverse human population. So a few things you need to focus upon here is that they are taking a large sample and the sample is from geographically diverse human population and they found that it belong to a common mitochondrial DNA ancestor. And since we are talking about mitochondrial DNA, we are talking particularly of the female origin and that is why the name has been given as mitochondrial Eve. All modern human mitochondrial DNA sequences originated between 1,40,000 to 2,90,000 years ago from a single ancestral sequence in Africa. So it is consistent with the single origin hypothesis. Now there is another thing that is called as Y chromosome Adam. Y chromosome which is inherited through the male line also contains phylogenetic information just like the mitochondrial DNA sequence track the female genome back in the time but it is of slightly different nature. A large portion of Y chromosome does not participate in the recombination events and thus as a result mutations build up in these regions with time. The phylogenetic analysis from 1500 humans from all continents traced Y chromosome to a common African ancestor living around 1,50,000 years ago. Now this is termed as Y chromosome Adam and again it is consistent with the single origin hypothesis. So both the mitochondrial Eve and the Y chromosome Adam confirm an African origin of humans. Besides these sex chromosome kind of studies, there are autosomal humans as well. Ni and Roy Chaudhary performed a phylogenetic analysis of 29 autosomal genes from 26 populations in the year 1993. This autosomal gene analysis also supported single African origin of human population. According to this study, Humans reached Eastern Europe 35,000 to 45,000 years ago, Australia around 50,000 years ago, North America 15 to 20,000 years ago and the South America around 12,000 to 15,000 years ago, which you can see here in this image. So here all the continents have been shown and these arrow demarcate the passage or the migration of humans along with the time the approximate time when they actually move to different areas or continents. Now, once we have this brief idea about the location, timeline and the molecular evidences of human evolution, now let us talk about the trends in human evolution, by which we mean what have been the major changes in human evolution. One of the most prominent change is the development of bipedalism. Bipedalism or the walking upright condition is one of the main human evolutionary adaptations. Provided freedom to hands for labor and less physically taxing movement. It better allows for long distance travel and even the hunting. It resulted in skeletal changes to the legs, knees, ankle joints, spinal vertebrae, toes and even the arms. 
pelvis became shorter and rounded with a smaller birth canal making birth more difficult for humans than other primates. In turn, this resulted in shorter gestation period as babies need to be born before their hats become too large. So these are some of the changes and the effects associated with the development of bipedalism. There has been lots of structural changes which have been associated with bipedalism. So here on the left you see this is maybe the ancestral form which is not the bipedalism and here you can see uh, maybe the human modern human which is bipedalism so you can see the amount of changes that has occurred throughout the body starting from the cranium to the spine to the pelvis girdle to the uh, knees and the arc foot and so on so a number of changes have taken place in order to develop this bipedalism in modern humans. Another interesting trend is the encephalization or the increase in the cranial capacity or the brain size. Larger brain size which is also called as encephalization began in early humans with Homo habilis and continued through the Neanderthal line which had the capacity of around 1200 to 1900 cubic centimeter. The ability of human brain to continue to grow after birth meant that social learning and language were possible. Modern humans have approximate brain volume of 1250 cubic centimeter. Here in this image you can see the increasing brain capacity. On the x-axis, it's a brain capacity in cubic centimeter. Here you see the time in terms of billion years ago. And here these are the different skull specimen of various transitional forms in human evolution, which represent the brain cap uh, cranial capacity in these green lines form. So you can see, for example, Homo habilis have the cranial capacity of around let's say 700 cubic centimeter and so on and here this is the modern humans or the homo sapiens which are having approximate 13,000 uh, 1300 cubic centimeter of cranial capacity the third major trend in human evolution is reduced sexual dimorphism humans have reduced sexual dimorphism or differences between males and females especially when you compare them with the other apes or the primates their sexual dimorphism is very much remarked means the difference between the male and female are very much pronounced whereas in case of humans it is relatively much reduced there is hidden stress which means the female is fertile fertile year round and shows no special sign of fertility. Human sexes still have some differences between them with males being slightly larger and having more body hair with less body fat. So these are the there has been a reduction in the sexual dimorphism but still we are sexually dimorphic with certain characters. Besides these major trends there have been n number of trends for example, there has been a gradual increase in the body size. There is a reduction in facial prognathism. The teeth became smaller, particularly the incisors and the canines. Jaw became smaller and less protruding. Sagittal crest and the brow ridges disappeared, which were there in the earlier primates, but now they are not there in modern humans. Development of opposable thumb and the development of arched feet are an, another interesting trends in human evolution. Now besides that, there has been an increased dependence on the tools for survival. Now having come across about these trends of evolution, let us move ahead to understand hominin evolution, where we'll see what have been the different transitional forms in the human evolution what fossils have supported us in tracing the history of human evolution and so on. 
So let us start with the earliest hominins, which includes various fossils which have been discovered by a number of paleoanthropologists. But let us focus on three major ones that is Sahelanthropus cadensis, Oroin tugensis, and Ardipithecus cadaba. Besides this, also there are so many fossils, but considering the limitation of time, we are going to discuss only a few major ones. Starting with Sahelanthropus cadensis. The fossils were discovered in Jurab district desert of Shad. It dates back to around 6.5 to 7.4 million years ago during the Miocene epoch and it was nicknamed as Taumi. If bipedal, it is very controversial whether they were bipedal or not. But if they were bipedal, then they are the earliest known putative hominin. Why we are calling them putative hominin? Because the fossil evidence are sparse. So we cannot have a confirmed clue that they were of the hominin lineage only. The brain size was approximate 340 to 360 cubic centimeter compared to the modern humans which are having more than 1120 to 1260 cc's. They had ape-like characteristics with wide spaced eyes, small brain case, but then human features were also there in the shape of the skull and teeth. No postcranial bones have been located, so it is impossible to know whether it was bipedal or not. The next fossil which we are going to discuss is of Aurorin tugensis. The hind limb features indicate bipedalism, whereas the forelimb indicates arboreal nature. Arboreal nature means they were living on the trees. It dates back to around 6.1 to 5.8 million years ago. The very first fossil was found in the year 2000 in the Tujin Hills in Kenya, and that is why they have been named as Tujinesis. They were chimpanzee sized and second oldest, again putative hominin. The next category is Ardipithecus cadaba. It dates back to 5.8 to 5.2 million years ago. Again, they were bipedal, but fossil evidence are again very minimal here. The first described in 2001 by Johannes Hale Selesi based on the bones collected from five localities in the middle Awash which is a place in Ethiopia. The body size, brain and relative arm proportions are more like chimpanzees rather than the humans. The next group which we are going to discuss which is very interesting because it was surely bipedal and it was surely the hominin lineage is called as Australopithecines or the southern apes of Africa. Australopithecines radiated as at least eight different lineages between 2.5 to 4.5 million years ago. They were bipedal hominids with relatively small brain. They had features similar to primitive ape and some as human too and they were commonly called as ape man because they had features with were matching both with the primitive ape as well as with the humans. Largest of them is Australopithecus boise. Now there are two forms of Australopithecines. One is called as gracile and another one is called as robust. The gracile form is lighter and smaller structures whereas robust means the heavier and the stronger structures. In the gracile australopithecines we had Ardipithecus remitus, Australopithecus afarensis, Australopithecus africanus and Australopithecus sediba which we are going to discuss next and after that we will move on to robust australopithecines which includes australopithecus robustus 
and Australopithecus boise. Starting with Ardipithecus remitus. It is the earliest Australopithecine fossil known so far. And it is the most ape-like hominin ancestor known so far, which is the relics of an Ethiopian species. If you talk about their age, it was approximate 4.3 to 4.5 million years ago and it shares a relationship with Australopithecus afarensis and extant great apes including the chimpanzees. Australopithecus afarensis, the fossils from East African sites at Lauteli, Tanzania and Afar that is Halda region of Ethiopia. It dates back to approximate 3.9 to 3 million years ago. Species with heavy bro ridges and very low forehead as you can see in this image of the skull. You can see the size of the forehead which is very low. It shows many ape-like features but it differs in cranial, dental and the skeletal structures from the apes. Now an interesting Australopithecus afarensis skeleton is the Lucy. Lucy is a complete skeleton of Australopithecus afarensis female with fully upright posture. That is very important and it was having a size of around 1 to 1.2 meter in height with bipedal locomotion. The skeleton was discovered by Donald Johnson along with Morris Tyre, Uvis Coppens and Tom Gray in the year 1974 in Africa at Hadar, a site in Awash Valley of the Afar Triangle in Ethiopia. And here you can see the kind of complete specimen which has been found with Lucy. Now there is another interesting story of Piltdown Man. Piltdown Man was a fossil thought to be of an early human and it was discovered by Charles Dawson in the Pleistocene gravel beds in the area Piltdown which is present in England and he discovered it in the year 1912. It was given the name Euanthropus Dawsoni or the Dawson's Dawn Man. Subsequently, it was shown to be cranium of human and lower jaw of female orangutan which was crafted to appear to be a fossil. So it was a great forgery but it got exposed in the year 1953. But you can see there is almost a 41 year gap between the exposure of this forgery of Charles Dawson. So here is the skull of Piltdown Man which was having the cranium of human but the lower jaw of female orangutan which was intentionally crafted to appear like a fossil. Moving ahead, let's talk about Australopithecus africanus.